Thank you. Uh, I'm sure that you will be happy to know that uh, this pr presentation is uh, on everything but uh, IFRS 9. So, the agenda of today, I will talk, mm, tell you just a little bit of something about me, then I will show you uh, where we were when we started this project, what made us want to, to change something in our uh, development organization, and then at the end, uh, where we landed, where, uh, where we are now. So, who am I? Ariana, that was pretty easy. Uh, let's hope that this will relax me. <laughs> I have been working for Syncorp Italiana, actually APL Italiana for the greatest part of it, uh, for uh, 12 years, uh, pretty much quite a long time. Before that, uh, I just played with uh, a couple of other programming languages, but uh, I haven't remained faithful to, to them. Um, I'm also not a programmer, I don't even have a computer at home, but Second of all, I'm a frequent attender of the Dialogue user meeting. Uh, maybe I could apply for a frequent flyer membership. If you are, if you are asking why, uh, my mother, a couple of weeks ago, sent me uh, this picture. She had organized the <laughs> usual uh, Christmas afternoon tea uh, for 12 people, and she set up that glass, but she said it was not as good as the other. So. Here I am. Uh, I'll stop pulling your leg. And um, why I, I, I like coming here, home. first of all, to, to, to hear for the, from the dialogue people what they have done during the year, but also for hearing what other users uh, are doing. It uh, made me feel less alone. It's strange how. Uh, people from uh, different companies uh, use the same language I play with every day for so many different things. We heard uh, uh, something about the DNA today. And then, about me, I, I'm a traveler, I like stories, I like books, I like cinema, I like everything that made you travel also without moving. So. Syncorp Italiana. I know you have heard it uh, quite a lot of time, but I must repeat you some known uh, things just to, to let you know where we were when we started that project. Uh, we are about uh, 130 people, divided uh, more or less uh, like this. We are 40 developers, uh, 40 consultants, less than 10 uh, sales, and the other staff members such as finance, uh, IT, or HR. But the main focus today will be on the developer. Uh, how were we organized? Uh, we are subdivided into development teams, uh, and uh, if we take a look at the area uh, each team work on, we could uh, divide us into macro groups. The first, uh, uh, the first one, we call it Generalisti. I'm a part of them. And uh, we work on the, let's say, the core part of Sofia, what we call the, the belly of Sofia, everything that's uh, underneath the, the holding screen. And then we got the other teams that work on the all the satellite modules that uh, turn around Sofia, such as the interfaces or the RISC, the, the LML groups. And uh, each team is composed generally by two up to six people. Uh, generally, the team from the generalistic group are no more than four. And uh, we work together on the same task. And, uh, Inside each group, you, we use to pair programming. Uh, um, if you happen to enter one of our offices, you, you most likely see two people behind the computer arguing uh, uh, every minute to, to try to, to, to do things the best way possible. Um, two minds are better than one, sure. And uh, then, at the end, there's DEVELOP. DEVELOP is uh, an organism formed by, at the, 
At that time, it was formed by three developers uh, plus our CTO. And uh, his task is to coordinate, support, and monitor all the development teams. What happened that, um, that made us want to change something? Mm, one day, the YASB started to talk about uh, IFRS 9. Uh, just to let you know, IFRS stays for International Financial Reporting Standard, and uh, it addresses the financial um, accounting and uh, contains three main topics. Uh, the classification and measurement of financial instruments, the impairment of financial assets, and the edge accounting. Uh, this project starts uh, immediately as a, um, a huge project, and uh, we were uh, soon, from the beginning, forced to, to rewrite part of uh, the, the belly of Sofia. Uh, in fact, we changed the name uh, IFRS, Pro IFRS 9 project to IFRS 9 and Friends project, where the word Friends stands for all the, uh, all the infrastructural development that we were forced to do. Uh, some of these friends, uh, for example, are all the data that we usually calculate at the fly when we need it. And then now we have to store, and uh, to store them, we have also to initial, initialize. And uh, other friends were brought by the fact that uh, at that time we, we were in a, in a way stalled. Every time we had to do a, a new development, it seemed pretty difficult to do it uh, without destroying the past. And uh, we have also to remember that the past for our uh, clients, also if sometimes is wrong, is nothing less than the truth, and it can be changed. So we were forced to add uh, some degrees of freedom for the, the future uh, development. And uh, doing it by, by freezing the past. And uh, for what I said to you before, for how we were organized, a single group of uh, generalists, fortunately not a pair, but a group of four, uh, taking their hand all, uh, all the project. And uh, as you can see, they found immediately in front of a mountain and a pretty high one, and they could do nothing more than to, to start to climb. But going up, the, the hike became uh, steeper and, uh, and steeper. Uh, why? Mm, because going on uh, with the development uh, one at a time, mm, it seems that uh, some new infrastructural intervention were, uh, were always needed. And uh, soon we realized that uh, one group of uh, programmers were, uh, were not enough. So the first SOS were launched because the Sofia release was at risk. And uh, the other development developers started to, to give them an end, but it, it seemed pretty difficult, mostly for two reasons. The first one is that uh, the gap between them uh, had become too, too large for them. And the second one is that uh, the other group uh, had uh, their own task to, to complete before the, the release date. So we started to have uh, some, some weekly meeting that uh, at the beginning started out as the story of art, but uh, became pretty much uh, from the beginning something else. The, the lonely hikers uh, try to, to tell the other what they had done, what they intended to do, all the frustration for this uh, project that it became huge and, uh, and huge. And uh, this situation created a lot of malcontent uh, among all, uh, all the other group. And uh, sometimes, because of uh, the gap that was at the time uh, between uh, the hikers and the other one, uh, 
uh, for them, it was easier to complete the task by themselves than try to explain to, to others where to begin. And uh, it became like a dog chasing uh, his, hand, his uh, tail. Sorry. And uh, what happened? It happened that the release date arrived, and uh, we were not ready. So we had to postpone it. What does it mean? It means also that uh, some capacity was released, because the other group uh, at that time completed their task, so they got uh, a lot of spare time to, to give a, a real end. And uh, what do we need to, to stay at their pace? We have to, to know uh, what the other group are doing and uh, what uh, needs to be done. Everyone needs to be aligned uh, to, to know what, what it remained. And uh, we, the, the, the group of the lonely hikers have to give uh, the, the times and ways things should be done, because they are the only one that had in mind uh, the, the big picture. In the meantime, uh, APL Italiana uh, became Syncorp Italiana, and uh, we started to hear about something that it was called stand-up meetings. And uh, that's when the stand-up meetings were born also in Syncorp Italiana. Uh, what did we do? We started out to work as a, a single group. Each morning, we found ourselves in a short meeting, and uh, we tried to tell the other what uh, everyone had done the, the day before, if he had uh, some problem, if he, if he had some question, and then he will say to the other what he intended to do that day. And uh, everyone was always aligned, and uh, so also more aware of uh, what was going on. And uh, the work, if uh, everyone was always aligned, is also better distributed uh, uh, among everyone. It was difficult to, to start that process when a project uh, is uh, at that stage. The group uh, was, was too far away, and uh, bringing uh, everyone on board was not uh, an easy task at, uh, at the time. Uh, what did we do when the emergency ended? Uh, actually, we continued to meet uh, each and every morning to try to avoid that uh, another situation like this may happen again. And uh, we do three different types of uh, stand-up meeting uh, now. We do from Tuesday to Friday, the original one, and uh, one uh, Monday um, every two weeks, we do what we call the extend-up stand-up meeting. Uh, here, not only the generalist team meet, but uh, we had a meeting with also the, the specialist to align everyone. And then the other Monday, when there's not uh, the extend-up stand-up meeting, we do something that we call the a bloody Monday. Uh, what's, this? <laughs> what's this? Uh, we uh, understand that uh, during this project, part of, uh, as I said before, the core of Sofia had uh, changed a lot. So everyone had to know how. And uh, this is not the only thing that uh, is uh, useful to, to explain. There are a lot of uh, other arguments that uh, may be useful to, to explain to all the others. So we collect all the doubt that uh, everyone had, and uh, every two weeks we found a volunteer that uh, chose a topic and tried to explain it to, to all the others. One day, before all this began, in, uh, in our forum appeared a suggestion for a, a good reading, uh, a business book, uh, let's say. It was uh, Creativity Overcoming the Unseen Forces That Stand in the Way of True Inspiration by Ed Catmull. 
some critics say that uh, Ed Catmull, that was the president of Pixar and uh, Walt Disney Animation, may have written one of the most thoughtful uh, management uh, uh, reading ever. And uh, in this book, uh, Catmull uh, brings us inside the Pixar ecosystem and um, let us know how they built and refined their excellence. And they, in this book, we found uh, the word post-mortem. What's a post-mortem? A post-mortem is a change of perspective uh, from uh, uh, what's working to the why something is not working. Katmul uh, in his book said that the post-mortem is a meeting thing held shortly after the completion of every movie in which we explore uh, what did and didn't work and attempt to consolidate lessons learned. We could summarize the reason for a post-mortem in uh, five different reasons. The first one is to consolidate what's been learned. What does it mean? Uh, it means that uh, during a project uh, that uh, may be flooded, you don't have time to fix uh, uh, what you have learned. And uh, having the time to sit down and uh, actually think about of what you learned, it could be useful. The second reason is teach others who weren't there. Uh, so much of what we do is not so obvious. Uh, sometimes it uh, seems also nonsense. It's the result of uh, hard-won experience. And if you give the other people a forum where they could read uh, why you choose to do something in a specific uh, manner or not, it could help the, the other to, to understand you better. The third reason is, is that don't let resentment fester. Mm, many things that uh, go wrong uh, may be caused by the misunderstanding and screw up. Uh, and if uh, you give uh, people the, a place where they could uh, talk about their frustration, it could help them to, to move on and, uh, and let it go. At the end, it paid forward. During a stand-up meeting, some important question may uh, arise. Uh, not always you, you will have the right answer to, to this question, but having them could help you for, uh, the uh, for, for another project. The preparation of the post-mortem. When uh, a post-mortem is scheduled, it will arrive you a list of uh, key questions that you are supposed to read and try to answer. And uh, the preparation of, cut, no, of the post-mortem, Katmul said, that was the 90% uh, as the 90% of the value of the post-mortem itself. And uh, um, answering this, this question, you have also to produce two lists. One list with the top three things that uh, you would do again another time in another project. And uh, more important, the top three things that uh, you wouldn't do again if you have to, to start another project. So we think about our project and uh, it was time to turn the light on on the IFRS 9 and friends and uh, let a post-mortem begin. A post-mortem is uh, uh, not a it's everything about evaluating a project. It's uh, not a place where you have to blame specific people, and this will not contribute to create a, an environment of trust between the, the participant, and it will not be useful. And uh, during the post-mortem, all, all of us were asked to, to be constructive, to share proposal, and uh, information, and more important of all, everyone is supposed to, to speak. Uh, they should uh, be, they should not take too long, and uh, 
they should be honest and comfortable to, to say to the others things straight. And they also naturally have to, to listen to all the others. And when we, we met, uh, we were said, and it was true, that uh, even if uh, it's a post-mortem, nobody will die if you switch off your phones, your uh, mails, your PC, uh, because there uh, should be no distraction. Everyone should be focused on, uh, on, on the project, on evaluating this project. And uh, every post-mortem has a, a golden rule that's uh, to, to, to stick to reality. Uh, what does it mean? It means to stay solution-oriented. Sometimes it's easier to, to complain, to criticize, but uh, uh, a post-mortem is uh, uh, about lesson learned. It's about uh, trying to, to find solution, not um, a bunch of complain. And uh, after the, during the post-mortem, actually, a group of volunteers were asked, and uh, their task is to analyze all the things that uh, has been said during the post-mortem, and uh, also formalize an operative uh, proposal. But uh, more important of it, they, sh they have to make sure to follow up uh, with the a report to all the, the participants of the post-mortem. IFRS 9, for us, was the first experiment, and after this, after the release of uh, SOFIA S64, we do two different post-mortem, one uh, for the risk calm area and uh, one for all the, the specialists. And uh, we actually we are planning to do to do more of that. Another consequence of the of uh, what happened is that uh, more people uh, wanted to 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 give an end to to make sure that uh, something like that doesn't uh, happen again and uh, to make sure that it will go differently another time. And they wanted to, to have uh, an active role in uh, coordinating all the development. So our develop uh, increase, we got uh, today eight developer plus uh, our CTO, as always. And uh, how do we proceed uh, from now on? Uh, by experiments, uh, by continue to keep those things that, uh, that works, and uh, trying to change all the things that uh, we find that are not working, and, they, and try to make them work again. Uh, maybe post-mortem will become handy some other time. Happy Halloween. <laughs> Thank you.